Okay, in this tutorial, we'll look at this spotlight just a little bit further, just for a few things. So when you're designing your scene, one of the things to consider is the location of your light. That is, it's a distance away from the objects that which you're working with. So it makes a big difference. Like if I grab this big gigantic light right here, yep, that's it, and I move it on Z, it starts changing the scene pretty quick. But I'll just keep moving them. All right. See, it's not nearly as bright, even though it's a big, giant, bright light. And that's because you have to look at light as far as the fall-off rate. So light falls off according to the inverse square law, meaning that the intensity of the light is inverse, just 1 divided by the distance squared. So if something's 2 feet away, it's, you know, if a light's 2 feet away, it's 1 fourth as bright. If it's, say, 3 feet away, it's 1 eighth as bright. 4 feet away, 1 sixteenth as bright. So it falls off pretty fast according to these type of laws and that's why when you look back in Blender Render when you would set a traditional spotlight in the scene like this one here they would give you the ability to change the fall off rate right here right they would they're trying to simulate light inverse linear inverse square that's the common that's normal according to physics and then you could kind of change things if you want sometimes I would just change this just for some kind of art effect Right? But within cycles, cycles is a different kind of render. Cycles is actually, you know, calculating the the properties of light as it goes. And so you really want to think about the physical location of your light when you're designing your scene. All right, well, so that's one thing to look into. You might look into the inverse square law with lights because it makes a big difference. And the other thing is, on this light, if you're familiar with photography, this will be second nature to you, but sometimes you get a um, you have a certain light and sometimes you put a light inside this big giant white light box you know it's just kind of a sheeting material that's that the light reflects through and it makes it big soft overall light in the scene and sometimes you take the light through and you try to focus the light through a snoot which makes it, it it attempts to take the light and it tries to direct it kind of like we're doing right here with this we're trying to like if I take this a little bit more S, Z, I scale this, and Z like that. Uh oh, scaled it the wrong way. Hang on. I better control Z that way. I must not have must not have both of them. But if I basically you're trying to direct it, kind of like we're doing within this cone from the previous lesson, we're directing at that location. But w the one thing you always do with these things is you make sure the inside of them is painted flat black color because what's happening here, this. I have as this turquoise color, but the light on the inside, not only is it shining straight down, but it's shining against the inside edge here, and that's going to bounce over here. It's shining against the inside edge here, and that bounces over here, and that's why you see the, the light kind of flare out like this. It goes everywhere. So the one thing is you have to use the correct type of reflectors on the inside, like I said, with the using a parabolic type surface that focuses light but the other thing if you just want to get started is make your light and turn it black or at least make a second copy of this cylinder and put it on the inside and make it flat black and you can see if I take this light and just watch the lighting in the scene if I drop this down to black see the light is a little more focused right in here notice that just watch this I'm going to crank it back up and you'll see, you see it's a little focus, I'll crank it up to all the way and see how it's more spread out like that. That's strictly because the light is bouncing off the inside of that white reflective surface now on the inside and making it look like that. In fact, if I made that, you know, like a glass material, well, no glass would go all the way through, that wouldn't work. Well, all right, well, I think you kind of get the idea. So turning your surfaces flat black can help if you want to make a focused light like that. Alright, well that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.